Welcome back. You're still with us on Startup Street. Google-backed SpaceX startup Pixel has announced the closing of $24 million in additional funding as part of its Series B round. It raised these funds from new investors m &G Catalyst and Gladebrook Capital Partners. They now join the cap table with existing backers that include Google, Radical Ventures, Lightspeed and others. The Bengaluru and California-based startup had earlier raised $36 million in the first tranche of its Series B round in June last year, with this, Pixel has raised a total of $95 million across all funding rounds to date. Joining me now to discuss this further is Awais Ahmad, the founder and CEO of Pixel. Uh, Awais, thank you so much for joining us on the show today and congratulations on raising these funds. You've raised this additional $24 million. Uh, you'll primarily use this to launch your entire constellation of 18 commercial hyperspectral satellites planned for the near future. If you could sort of take us through the plans on this front and where else will the funds go? Absolutely, and I'm glad to be here. Um, I think you know it's it's a it's a good sign of confidence in us that the investors sort of came in with that additional 24 million. We didn't really go out looking for it. We were just having some conversations with interested investors, and and that ended up sort of coming in into our bank account, which is a good place to be. But to answer your question, I think the major focus of the additional 24 million will be to accelerate plans of the deployment of our constellation. Um, so up to date, over the last three years, we have built and launched three satellites. Um, that have gone up there, that have beamed down data that we have sold to customers and, and shown how uh, satellite imagery can help make impact on Earth. Um, but with the additional 24 million, um, we are going to be launching six of our commercial Firefly satellites, um, what we call Fireflies that will go up, provide us with global coverage with a daily revisit, which means I can come back and relook at any place on the globe every 24 hours. Uh, and also help accelerate our plans for 12 additional satellites in 2026. So six more satellites in 2025 very soon now. And 12 more satellites in 2026 uh, is what will what this additional funding will help us to launch and build. Right. So six satellites uh, for the coming year at this point. But, you know, speaking about these satellites, you essentially are developing hyperspectral imagery satellites, right? If you could sort of explain to us what it is that you do, you know, sort of in layman terms so people can understand. And what's the demand you're sort of seeing at this point? Absolutely. So I think in the most basic sense, we are photographers, but we are photographers of our planet. Um, so you have these satellites, we put cameras on the satellites, uh, and the cameras are deployed in an orbit around the Earth. And so they're continuously orbiting around the Earth and going to different places. Uh, and what they do is whenever they come over an area of interest, let's say a farm or an oil and gas pipeline um, or a certain city that a municipal corporation wants to see, we switch on the camera, we take an image, and then we downlink that image down to Earth to analyze what's happening, um, right? And so what hyperspectral means is instead of being able to just see things in the visible range like human eyes can see, we can go way beyond that to see a lot of invisible problems that are plaguing our planet. For example, if there is certain level of pollution happening within water bodies or lakes in our cities, we can identify what specific chemical is being imparted into the water. Where is it coming from? Or we've been talking about the AQI levels of New Delhi for quite a while now. Where are these affluents actually coming from? What is causing uh, the level of uh, AQI increase from there? So those invisible things that normal cameras or human eyes can't see, that's what our hyperspectral cameras on our satellites enable us to, to do. Uh, in terms of use cases and demand, I think we're seeing quite a bit of that over the last few years now that we put up some satellites up there. Um, quite a bit of it is from agricultural companies. Uh, we have signed an agreement with the Ministry of Agriculture in India where we help them identify which crop is growing where in the country. We help identify what nutrients are present in the soil or not. We help identify what is, what is the yield for a particular crop going to be and therefore to plan for either importing or exporting that particular crop. If you're looking at oil and gas industries and companies, we help look at oil leaks and gas leaks from pipelines, both above ground and underground. Uh, we help mining companies reduce their impact uh, on mining operations when deforestation is happening and not. And we can just about look anywhere on the planet from melting polar ice caps to increasing sea levels uh, to you know where the hurricanes might come and forest fires and so on and so forth. Um, as of now, we have more than 50 customers that have already signed with us in anticipation of the fireflies going up in, in all of these industries, including the Indian government, the US government, uh, such as NASA that we recently signed a contract with. So the demand I think is there. We just need to now send, send a lot of these satellites up and, and provide that data. So demand is something you're clearly seeing for your product and for what you're able to offer. Um, so, you know, Pixel reported an operating revenue of 15 uh, crore rupees and a loss of a little over 10 crore rupees in FY23, right? So if you could, you know, you've signed a lot of deals, like you said, one with NASA recently. So if you could take us through what you're going to expect for FY24, what are the targets, you know, where are you going from here? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, we're a different kind of business compared to most businesses. We have to spend a lot of money on building these satellites 
uh, and launching them to space uh, before we can start to see a significant amount of revenues coming in, right? And that's true for most deep tech companies, but especially for space technology companies where the hardware cost, whether that's rocket for rocket companies or satellite cost for satellite companies like ourselves. And so you will see losses for the first few years of operations. Uh, but what happens is, you know, let's say when we launch this constellation of Firefly satellites we are talking about next year, um, there are a lot of these contracts that we have signed that customers are waiting for. And when the data starts to come from this commercial satellite constellation, that's when we start to generate revenues and it starts to pay back for itself. Um, so roughly in terms of economics, it's a seven year life cycle for a satellite from it being launched in space to us wanting to replace it takes seven years. The first year is generally recouping the cost. It costs um, between 14 to 30 crores, depending on what kind of satellite you're looking at to build a satellite. Uh, and then it takes, uh, you know, multiply that by six for the cost, but you recoup that in less than a year. And then after that, it's purely an 80% margin business on the basis of data you're selling because the recurring costs of operations are not very high because most of those costs are on the satellite. So what is for us next year? Um, it's basically getting to a point where we are a bit positive, where we are also hopefully cash flow positive, but that might end up taking till mid 2026 for us to get. Uh, but once these six satellites are launched, which is the phase one of our constellation, that's when we will start to see a significant amount of revenues come in. Up until now, it was a pilot here, a pilot there because of the demo satellites that we launched. But now hopefully that dam uh, opens up for the revenue to come in. So hopefully the dam opens up and you will be EBITDA positive by 2026 or maybe even towards the end of 2025. All right, always, thank you so much for joining us on the show and we wish you all the best on this journey going forward. Lovely. Thank you to be. Thank you. Good to be here. Moving on, the 10-minute food delivery.